And then I'm going to say, so what you came here to hear today about is uh, what is now called Parmetric, but didn't actually have a name when I met with these guys to talk to them about it. It was called something else. I don't know what it is. But uh, we've got uh, Ben and Wes here to talk about it. And I just realized I walked up here without an introduction. So it is going to be entirely okay for you to tell people who you are and what you do. Who do I hand this microphone to? Wes gets it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. I think Ben's going to start. Yep. Ben Moore. Good? Can you hear me? All right. <clears throat> we had a little technical difficulty earlier this afternoon, so we we're borrowing a laptop from Tim Hess. So thank you, Tim Hess. <laughs> <laughs> And it works, perfect. All right, my name is Ben Moore. Um, I did a GSA talk probably eight months ago here for uh, Founders Institute, where we launched a company called T-Form. And um, CEO of T-Form, we do advanced manufacturing for custom thermal form packaging. So we do a turnkey solution for that. Um, I'm presenting today with a co-founder and uh, Parmetric West. You introduce yourself. My name is Wes Johnson. I'm uh, starring <coughs> Parmetric with Ben. I'm the COO. We are uh, excited to be here today and talk to you. My background is in engineering. I've worked in operations, product development, and also innovation roles in a, a large local uh, manufacturing firm here. And just excited to tell you guys a story about what we're building here today. Cool. All right. I'll go ahead and start us off. <coughs> so. The big topic here is how to build a replicator, how we built a replicator. One, any Star Trek fans in here, hopefully? Does everybody know what a replicator is? Okay, because that's going to help make this a lot easier. So. <laughs> so before we start talking about the future and how we want to build this replicator, first we want to start with a little bit of history, a little bit of design history. Where did it start? It started with cavemen riding on cave walls, it progressed to drawings, and from Da Vinci to about the 1980s, that's all it was, is drawing on paper. When you convey an idea, you take something 3D and you put it on paper. And we did the natural human thing and we just threw a lot more people at it. So you got a lot more drawing boards. We came up with some standards, but for many, many, many years, nothing changed. Still drawing on paper, still drawing on paper today in a lot of cases. So around the 1980s, that started to transition a little bit and transition from paper to computer. Still conveying a lot of 2D ideas, uh, throwing more people at it, as you can see in the screen here. And we're keeping these black and white since these are old history lessons. And <clears throat> from this, you can see you start to develop 3D. You start to actually articulate things in 3D. And you go from a 2D environment to more or less a 3D environment. Oh, you got it. Thanks. Appreciate it. So the, uh, in 3D, you can actually articulate your design better. You can show something in 3D where someone can actually understand it versus a technical drawing. You can showcase it for manufacturing. You can showcase a video now. You can showcase how an assembly would work. You can do all this and it requires a lot of computing power. So the more and more detail we got, the bigger and bigger and bigger our computers got and the more complex they were, the more computing power you needed. And the biggest problem now is collaboration. How do you get 10 people working on one design like you see here? How can you talk out and back? How can you edit a file without overriding something that someone else started the day before? It's kind of like Word and PowerPoint when you can't open them at the same time until recently, where if someone edited it and then saved over, you lost what you did. And now you have a fight in the office. Click it for me. So solution to that, let's take it to the cloud, which you have here. We're taking those design concepts and we're moving them from your own computer to a cloud. What if you could just basically log into a computer, open up a browser and do CAD? What if you could save it all into the cloud? What if you didn't lose anything? What if two people could work on the same drawing, the same 3D model at the same time? It just sounds logical for what you want to do. Real quickly, we're going to showcase a new CAD platform called Onshape. Um, it is a browser-based, fully browser-based, fully cloud-based 
CAD package. We'll do it real quick. So while Ben's doing that, I'll tell you a little bit about Onshape. It's an amazing new tool. It's a completely online, browser-based cloud uh, CAD platform. So you can take a professional, make it a professional engineering and technical drawings, and all you need is a browser and a computer. And as you can see here, Ben went to onshape.com. He logged in. He actually has a free account here. And he's going to draw a part for us because we want to uh, showcase some design technology. And one of the cool things we, oops, <laughs> uh, Ben is not a Mac guy either. So yeah, there just, you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, and of course, uh, what we're doing here is uh, is we're really trying to showcase the the collaboration aspect of it. And what's amazing there is you can actually share drawings with anybody in the world, and you can actually edit them at the same time. And if you're familiar with Google Docs, it works almost exactly the same way. And we'll show you how that works in a little bit here. I think Ben's going to uh, maybe draw us a smiley face. Maybe. <laughs> I can get there um, quick enough. So, and uh, the cool thing too about Onshape is it's actually sort of the grandfather of CAD, as we call it. the guy who invented SolidWorks, is actually working on this project. So, you have some of the really industry leaders and in CAD are developing this platform, and we're, we're just really, really excited about it. <clears throat> That's a frowny face. It is. <laughs> All right, you want to share that with me? Yes. So Ben, ben drew a, a frowny face, and we're working on this project together. And I, I'm sort of more into the, the tune of we need, to, we need to do happy faces. We need to, we need to be happy about what we're, we're designing here. So I actually just got a notification on my phone. I have the native Onshape app, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to fix this, uh, this frowny face problem for us right now. <clears throat> send it to me. It's the, the cool thing about live technical demonstrations is that you always have these kind of things that happen. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that would be the ticket. We actually almost had to do that earlier, is to be look, honest. Yeah. All right, I got it. Okay. <clears throat> oh, this is good. <laughs> I'm, uh, so I'm downloading that part. I've got it synced up to my phone now. And I could be at a business meeting like this. I could be giving a presentation and uh, decide I need to edit this part. And uh, actually, Ben uh, recently uh, did a, uh, a blog post where he was in a, ca a cab in New York City and was able to win a job because he was able to edit parts uh, and submit a quote to a client while he was in a, sitting in an Uber in uh, New York City. So that's pretty yep. amazing. Yep. So uh, this is loading. And uh, One thing you can see is <coughs> Wes makes edits to that. Yeah is kind of Google Docs, as everyone's familiar with that, when you see someone in your document that usually highlights. So you can see a W here at the top of the screen. And uh, that indicates that Wes is actually working on this document with me at the same time. Let's see if I'm good at this. Get it. <clears throat> there you go. You, you would think that, and one reason why it's lagging probably as much as it is, and he's working now, is we're on hotel internet yeah. through their little portal. So what you see here is large-scale CAD, and it does all the hard computing on their back end. It visually gives you a representation on the front end. And it's dynamic and live where I can tell now that since he did join, now he's working on Sketch 2 that I created. You can probably just delete that or something <laughs> if you can't get it. All right, so here's the thing is that was... Uh, that was a little bit harder to do on the iPhone, but uh, it's a lot better on an Android. <laughs> just, just in case, that's the thing. All right, we're going to move on. So basically, what I could do is, if I could get it to work, we would uh, we would edit that, and we'd be able to basically collaborate. And that's what that's the what we're trying to get across is there's a new CAD platform out there. It's collaborative, intensive, and it's it's a great it's a great uh, new CAD package. So we're going to keep going. Um, so Ben told us a little bit about designing stuff. So basically, we have come up with an idea. We got to convey that idea. We got to tell people about our idea. And all that design stuff is great, 
but normally we want to use that design information to make stuff because that is really uh, what we're trying to do when we design stuff as engineers, as product developers, as <coughs> makers, is we're trying to, to build cool stuff. And so since the beginning of civilization, we have extracted raw materials out of the earth, we've pulled them out of the ground, and we've turned them into stuff that improves our lives. Think taking a tree, turn it into a spear, you take that raw piece of wood, you, you subtract material from it, you whittle it away, and you turn it into something that's useful. And we've gotten a lot better over time at using that same process. We develop precision machine tools that can, with a lot more accuracy, make, make new objects, make things that are useful to us. And this is an example of a, of a lathe. So this is something where a human actually turns knobs and dials and they can, they can make stuff. And this allows us to do stuff that's pretty strong and, and pretty high tolerance. So we took that to the next level and we said, turning knobs and dials is great, but uh, let's, uh, let's strap a computer to it and let's see, let's see where we can take this. So we developed uh, CNC machines, computer numerical controlled machines. So what we're able to do is we're able to take a design and we're able to whittle away material uh, just like we did with that spear, but we're able to do it in a very high tech way. We've got a, uh, we can do it automatically essentially, and we can do it with even higher tolerance. These machines are incredibly expensive, but you can make really amazing parts. You can see here we're making, uh, we're actually making a helmet out of aluminum, which is uh, pretty fascinating. So whittling away material is not the only way to make stuff. We can heat plastic up and we can squirt it into mold. If you look at the, uh, the lemon heart here, that's the uh, exact same process. And what that does, it's a little, it, you can make stuff really fast. So instead of taking a block of plastic and whittling away at it over time, you can make a, make a tool, make a, a version of that, a uh, sort of a female version of that. You can heat plastic up and you just squirt it into this tool. And it's amazing how fast you can make stuff. We're making 72 bottle caps every three seconds right here. So that's pretty amazing stuff. This works well for high volume. It takes a long time to get that tool made. It costs a lot to get that tool made. So you have to plan on making a lot of these things. So the point being here, there's a, there's a lot of different ways to, to, make, to make stuff. And it's a fairly complicated to navigate the process. So if we continue on with this, uh, this technology here, we figured out how to whittle away material. We figured out how to heat stuff up and squirt it into a tool. We, some really smart people figured out how to print stuff layer by layer. This is actually an example of uh, laser centering metal. So essentially the way this works is we have a powdered metal material and we have a high precision, high powered laser that actually is welding pieces of powder together. And you can build this up layer by layer. And the end result is you get amazing complexity in your parts. But the problem is, is that these things are really expensive. Because this is, in my book, this is getting close to a Star Trek replicator right here. So, <clears throat> the, we, so we worked on metal stuff. We figured out how to 3D print metal. And we can't, we can't talk about new technologies and new manufacturing without talking about 3D printing. It's been an amazing new enabling technology that essentially has, um, allows us to take a design that we drew in CAD, which we saw earlier, and we can actually print it uh, just easily right there. And the way this works is essentially it uh, extrudes and it heats up and extrudes a weed eater string <laughs> and uh, prints it out as plastic and you have a, a computer controlled interface to, to print this up. And these things are really cheap. You can buy these at Office Depot, I think. And, and that's amazing. The parts you make out of it are fairly ornamental. They're, uh, you can make cool widgets, you can hold them in your hand, you can see what they look like. And they're not very strong. So there's drawbacks to that. So you take something like those metal parts we looked at earlier, they're high strength, they're expensive to build. You take something like this, they're low cost, but they don't have a lot of functionality. But what has been amazing with this technology and what has been truly fascinating has been, it has spawned and has facilitated this new movement called the maker movement. And essentially, uh, you know, for, 
For decades and decades, new product development, bringing new products to market, has been constrained to large organizations with big R&D budgets, doing lots of consumer research, that have a lot of manufacturing know-how. They know how to make parts. They know how the ins and outs of all those different manufacturing processes I told you. But what the maker movement has done, what it is, is it's, these big companies are making cool stuff. I wanna make cool stuff too. I wanna do it in my garage. I wanna do it customized to me. I wanna do it on my terms. So the 3D printers have really been an amazing enabling technology for that. And the whole maker movement itself has been, you know, a lot of guys just make stuff. I want to make a cool widget in my garage. I want to make a little bracket for my lawnmower. But a lot of times, those makers, they're saying, I want to bring this to market. I think there is a value for this in the market. And there's been a new, amazing new crowdfunding platform. So if you're a maker, if you have an idea for a widget, you have an idea on how to solve a problem, you actually now have a way to go out and take your product to market get funding for the product and determine your pricing and do basically market research all online. So you can take, you can start in your garage and now you have a whole platform to go out and sell your new product. And it's created some amazing new products. Did anyone uh, buy a coolest cooler? You bought a coolest cooler, you bought a coolest cooler. The coolest cooler was one of the most successful initially projects on Kickstarter. It's probably hard to see there, but they had shot for a goal of $50,000 on Kickstarter and they actually raised 13 million. So I don't know if you guys know how Kickstarter works, but this is, you're basically paying to buy one of these early. So they bought, they got $13 million worth of orders in for this thing. And it was amazing. It was the coolest new thing. These guys had, had come up with it. And then uh, this happened. The, uh, the coolest, the wheels, the wheels sort of fell off the coolest cooler. Um, there was massive product delays. They were trying to ship, they couldn't figure out how to make this thing. They didn't have expertise in manufacturing. They didn't know how to, how to get a product to market. They were in over their head. And it was a, it was a big disaster, unfortunately. Did you get, did, have you got your coolest cooler yet? Two years, okay. So, how about, <laughs> how about, did you get yours yet? Okay, is it awesome? Okay, all right, well, at the end of the day, it's awesome. But, uh, so it makes you think, you know, if you got a cool idea for a widget, how do you make it? Cool, so I have an idea for a widget. And just like most ideas, typically your idea happens to be on a Chick-fil-A napkin. <clears throat> luckily, thanks, luckily I scanned this so we don't have to all look at my napkin. So, <clears throat> does anyone play the new Pokemon Go game? Does anyone got it on their phone? I know Phil does in the back. Yeah. So, I'm going to try to be awesome at this. Usually, you got to run from point A to point B. I'm not really in the shape for running anymore. So, I'm going to attach my iPhone, actually Wes's iPhone, to a drone and fly it from point A to point B. And have someone there play and play. So, that's the project that we're going to roll through right through here. So. Got my little sketch, got my little project. I'm like, I need to make this. I want to do some product manufacturing. I want to make something. So I go to Google and I type it in, and there's 608 million results. And the top two are actually not manufacturing at all, it's regulations. So that might have been a bad example. So now I need to go talk to some friends, talk to some people I know, some people I went to college with, and be like, what, what should I be looking for? Like, oh, well, maybe look local. Look local versus Google. It's not going to help you. So you do that. This is after the Google search. So I do that and I go to the yellow pages. I'm like, all right, type this in and I get 231 results. And that's how I feel after that as well. Because none of those results are helping me. I can't find anyone local, 230 companies to talk to. There's a lot of companies to talk to. So go back to the drawing board and I'm like, what well, if I get a little bit more detailed? Everyone I talk to says, look, look more for machining, not for manufacturing. It's like, all right. So I took 230 results down to 173. So still kind of feeling like this. Like I'm not going to get my widget made. So I just break down and I go back a few years and pick up a phone and start calling all these manufacturing companies, calling all these local machine shops who can help me make my widget. And I finally find one that's like, yeah, we'll help you. And we're like, great, thank goodness. And you're like, 
is get some CAD drawings, get us some technical specs on that, do some geometric, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, get us a full package of information, and uh, we'll get you a quote in about two weeks. Just fax that over. And I'm like, I don't have a fax machine. I don't have CAD. I'm not really sure how to do any of this. And I'm two weeks out. But so that's how I'm feeling again. So then I get on Google and I look it up. All right, CAD. What, what CAD packages are out there? I find these two great packages, the biggest probably in the industry, and one's almost four grand and one's 6,200 bucks. Well, now my little widget cool idea is gonna start costing me a lot of money, and I back at this again, just frustrated. I can't get, I can't get my widget made. It's gonna cost a lot of money to try to do that. So that whole process was just terrible, and that's typically what all the makers, all the startup guys, I've been a product developer in companies and I'm going through the same thing where I just, I don't know who to call. I don't know how to get this thing made. And somehow there's got to be a better way of getting that made. So I have a solution for you, Ben. <clears throat> we, have, uh, we have developed a vision for a company that we're sharing with you to solve the problem of getting an idea out of your head and getting a physical object in your hand that you can use and adds value to your life. So the vision is parametric. And the way it works is we take, you can take a free cloud-based CAD package, which we looked at earlier, and we're going to connect into that the parametric app. And the parametric app is a engineering manufacturing assistance coupled with on-demand quoting and also order fulfillment. <coughs> So you can actually get advice on how to make your part, figure out how much it's gonna cost, and order the part all inside of a CAD application in your browser. And at the end of the day, you can actually get parts delivered to your doorstep in as little as 10 days. So, let's, uh, Ben, you wanna talk about this uh, cool drone bracket you designed yes. up for us? <clears throat> we would try maybe another uh, trial of Onshape, but we can try that later. <laughs> so, <laughs> That didn't work out too well the didn't first time. Didn't work out too well. So uh, in Onshape here, we have a, uh, a bracket that we drew up for the drone. It can attach to the bottom of a bracket for the, on the bottom of the drone, hold an iPhone. And using Onshape, you can see at the top as an app store. So not only can I do CAD, but I can add things to CAD. I can add the capability of doing really cool 3D renderings. I can add the capability of the Parametric app, which is our app, that will tie you into the manufacturing. And in this case, we pulled it up, we have installed the app, and talk to everyone, I need, I need a prototype. I want something made for my bracket. So 3D printing is the way to go. It's a cheap way to get there. We showcased that in manufacturing earlier. So I go, I use the Parametric app. I run through the processes that you see here. Next one. And order my, order my parts. And my parts are coming in the mail. Get my drone, fly it around, having a great time. And then this happens. Crash my drone into a tree. And guess what? The little plastic bracket broke. So now I don't know what to do. I'm like, all right, that was a great idea. It worked. I was doing well. And then my bracket broke. Then I'm stuck. And that's how you feel. And that's how I feel. <laughs> Again. It's, it's sad. <laughs> Just a lot of sadness. <laughs> so we need to give Ben some advice on how to make his drone bracket better. We need to figure out how we're going to make it strong so because he's a He's not good at the Mac. He's not good at flying a drone either, Apparently clearly. <laughs> so we need, we need a better way. And, uh, and we're talking about this engineering and manufacturing assistance, and we're, we're looking at this in a new way. Um, of course, you can pick up the phone and call an engineer, and that's always going to be available. But there's been some amazing new advancements in artificial intelligence. And so I'm going to give you a quick run through of the vision for this. So with artificial intelligence and the, the platforms that are available out there to us, we can actually take thousands of years of manufacturing know-how I talked, walked through earlier. We can upload that into the cloud, and we can actually have a computer determine, you can ask it a question, and it will say, I understand what you're working on. I understand what you're asking. And we can tap into that manufacturing knowledge. And what's amazing about it is that as a, as a company, I don't actually have to uh, write out every explicit response. So I don't have to sit there and say, if you ask, how do I make this in a CNC machine, I do not have to type an explicit response. 
the, the, the AI platform is able to understand what you're thinking, understand the context, and actually deliver you the information you need uh, whenever you need it. And we can actually integrate this as a sort of a chat platform inside of our application. And we, we, named, uh, we named the service, we called it Perry or Pari. I haven't quite figured out the pronunciation, but it's basically your, your AI assistant for manufacturing for design. And uh, we think it's pretty exciting. Of course, computers can't solve all our problems. So if you get to the end and uh, Pari can't solve your, uh, your challenge, we're gonna connect you to a engineer uh, on demand where you can get advice and get your parts made, get your ideas uh, delivered to you. Perfect. So Pari said, make it with a CNC machine. Yes. So now that I've used the Parametric app, Pari, pulled it up and it says, your best bet is a CNC machine. You need a CNC machine your component. With that, I went through and I ordered my components. The good news is, is now, unlike the coolest cooler, I can see, is this gonna be really expensive if I order 500, if I order 1,000, can I scale? What's my cost at 10,000 parts? What's my cost at three prototypes? And this allows me to dig in with that, play with quantities, play with materials, play with finishes, play with processes, and give me direct dynamic feedback to the customer. So you're getting feedback on how to make your component, what process is best, what, what features will make it more expensive or cheaper, and, and allow you to work with that component till you get a price that you like. So we'll launch and perfect. We're flying around, we're playing the game, we're doing excellent at it from point A to point B. And uh, now that it's safe in flight and I haven't wrecked it anymore, it's time to actually use my phone after I used his. And I have an Android, so I wanna make it fit both. So now it's essentially back to the drawing board or really back to the cloud. Go ahead. And generate a new type of uh, bracket. So we take out the Dremel tool, we whittle away at it, we make it kind of fit, we make it work until it actually holds both phones, it works great. So now we have an idea in our hand that's not really the same as what we did on the computer screen. We got two different things. And the solution to that is 3D scanning. On the left, you can see an industrial big 3D scanner, 20, 30 grand. On the right hand side, you can see one attaches to an iPhone. So now we'll be out in the field, we can scan in this bracket and then upload that bracket back onto Onshape and now we just essentially 3D scan and replicated that. So we went from an idea concept on paper, we modeled it in the CAD, then we made it in a prototype stage. That worked for a while until it broke. We made more of a production run level thing. That worked perfect, but there's always modifications. We replicate those modifications in the field with 3 scanner, go back, update our model again, and now we're able to actually run production on a big scale. Next one. So with that, through design, through uh, taking something, scanning it back in after it's completed, we're replicating. We can take any type of design, any size, scale it down, make it bigger, make it larger, all within CAD, and replicate it. So you can go from a concept to a physical part, an idea, all the way to a real part repetitively, and they'll come to your door in just days, not weeks, not months. And if you don't understand the manufacturing, you don't have to, you have the help within the CAD. If you don't understand quantity differences in materials, you have the help in the CAD. So now you're to the point where you're replicating and you're replicating anything. So hopefully you guys uh, learned some new stuff about manufacturing. Um, awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we just wanted to, to let you know, this is, this is our vision. This is what we are going for. Uh, ben and I are, are local entrepreneurs here in Greenville. And we are, we are just getting this thing kicked off. We are looking for ideas, looking for feedback, looking for connections. And uh, we truly think that this is a, an opportunity for Greenville to take its manufacturing powerhouse know-how, and we're gonna couple that with technology. We're gonna go up against the Silicon Valleys of the world. And uh, we're excited to have the opportunity to speak to you guys today about it. And uh, the great thing is that if you wanna stay engaged and learn more, about what we're doing, we will actually be at uh, Synergy Mill, which is at the next manufacturing space on August 25th. We're gonna be doing a intro to Onshape. So if you have never used CAD before, if you maybe you still don't even know what CAD is, you could come to this and we can actually walk you through it, get you set up on your computer. And then we're also gonna 
do a deep dive into Parmetric. We're going to figure out the features and all the widgets that are going to help give you guys be able to get your idea and get it delivered, get it manufactured. So uh, with that, we'll open up for, uh, for questions. Thank you very much. John. Out of the gate with Parmetric, we'll do 3D printing of uh, a couple of different types of plastics. Um, then uh, with that, we will release 3D um, three-axis machining. So we can turn stuff, and the materials will be aluminum, steel, stainless steel, camera, and a plastic. So we'll do a common one like that. Down the road, though, we want to include um, lasering, sheet metal, weld mitts, and basically an injection molding. Anything that you want, um, all the manufacturing processes, you'll have a full range. Yes. <clears throat> We're going to work with strategic partners out of the gate to actually fulfill our orders. So we've been talking to a number of manufacturers, mostly in the upstate, to, uh, to execute those. Yes, sir. Oh, sir. Definitely, I think that's a great, a great one to look at. I think there's able. I think you're actually able to 3D print those now, and um, and that's one thing we can allow with our platform is we can, we can add those materials as an option, and we can inform customers in terms of environmental impact and just all the trade-offs you would have from biogradable different types of plastic. So they would be the designers themselves would be able to, uh, to make that decision as they go through the design process. Okay, the question was, if if I had said, the question was, um, what about biodegradable plastics and integrating those, um, the Im impact on the environment of, of plastics in general, and uh, it is a it is a big concern. So, like I said, we're we're going to try and enable people to make decisions about which plastic materials to use and and offer those up down the down the line, especially with these injection molding parts when you can make when you can make a lot of stuff fast. You want to be able to uh, you want to be able to just allow people to make those design decisions. Yes, sir. When you were dealing with steel or metal, are you able to take those to any polymer to take them after or after the computer? We we can. Yeah. Um, our pro. So the question was, uh, are you able to deal with geometric changes to the materials after like a heat treating post? Post uh, process, we will have uh, different steps in the Parmetric app where you have something that is like a pre-machining or even an assembly method. Like welding would be an assembly method, so heat treating would actually be treated as an assembly method. You're doing something as a starting process, then you would heat treat it, and then you might grind it or something. That would be a secondary process. So we're taking those steps into account. Uh, I think it's seven to nine. Um, Joey would know. And uh, Joey, Joey's with Synergy Mill back there. He's he's putting it on for us. So thank you, Joey. <laughs> yep. Question. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about I mean, your 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 target market. I mean, who you really you know? How are you guys going to make money on this in terms of you know, the market? So. The question is, is what market are we, are we going after, where we want to try to make the money? And we're actually looking at two different markets. One is the maker movement. Um, they, they want to have a lot of widgets made. They'll have one or two made, but that's about it. Um, the larger market will be the product developers. Your R&D at a company, you need something machined, something welded. It's not your core business that you're in, like if you're in a big OE type company. You're doing whatever the OE is. You're not fabricating widgets typically. So you can outsource that. So we look as the product developers are the ones that would be buying uh, custom machine components, custom 3D printed components through us. Yeah, as an example, I worked in product development at a large firm. And of course, we have established network that we <coughs> go through to get, get prototypes made. But as an engineer, as a developer, I want to be able to get feedback quickly 
when I make a design change on what, what impact does my design have on the cost and the, and the lead time and be able to get parts delivered fast. And that's, so that's the value proposition for the product developer. And of course, I need the ability in my procurement department to, to go outside the system. But we think, we think there's a market there for the product developer, maybe in a small, like, low vo like a smaller um, organization to just to get stuff fast and get, get quick feedback on their designs. <clears throat> Uh, sort of integrated with, uh, with any like browsing options, like I don't know, maybe I want a different type of lampshade or something. I can just kind of look it up and see if it's a you know custom one-off, something I couldn't buy from the store, but uh, I could immediately find the cat drawing somewhere uh, and then integrate that and just have it printed. Uh, the question is: Is there a uh, like an online? I guess we're. Like grouping, shopping. like a shopping, if you want to find something like a window shade, it's a one-off, can you somehow find the CAD data? And a good answer to that, the partnership that we're doing with Onshape, Onshape is a new company. They are, um, based, they are web-based, they are cloud-based, and they have a public and a private kind of domain. So the public domain, there's been a lot of features, a lot of objects uploaded. So you can get, you can just search and say, I want a blah, blah, blah screw, and then you can find a 3D model for that. Or Companies are uploading, like if you're a pump manufacturer, you can upload your pump so other people can download it and use it. So it's becoming a very large community of just free files. And with any of those, you can run through Parametric and have any piece of that made. Yeah, well, I haven't used it since beta, so yeah. I don't really know. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? Well, thank you very much. Good. Thank you.